Hello viewers, today I'm back with another video. This one is more of a guide than a gameplay video. I've been busy recently grinding Skyblock more than ever on twitch.tv slash if you want to see all the off-camera grinding that I do. Today's video will be a progression guide for Iron Man dungeons. I know a few of these exist, but they either didn't start all the way at entrance or didn't go all the way until M7. I also personally feel I'm more qualified to be making this as the highest Iron Man catacombs level on the server. So, let's get into it. Let's start off with the entrance floor. You're going to have either Ender Armor or Glacite Armor when you enter this floor. In terms of weapons, you're going to want a Raider's Axe or a Dragon Shortbow and an Aspect to the End for Mobility. I'll be using Glacite Armor and a Raider's Axe. Select the Berserk Dungeon class if you're going to be playing with a Axe or AOTE. And if you're using a Dragon Shortbow, then select the Archer class. You're going to want to be killing as many mobs as possible so you can pick up the random dungeon armor that drops when you kill them. What you want is a full set of dungeon armor, uh, just like all, all four pieces of anything. It could be a mix, it doesn't really matter. And a Dreadlord Sword. The Dreadlord Sword is very important. You can also kill the mini bosses if you're able to for uh, the fragments for dragon armor, which will be useful later. So, yeah, see, like I just got a piece here. I've already prepared a set for the video, so we're gonna leave the dungeon now. And when you finish doing that, Purchase a pair of dark goggles from Ophelia for 77, oh no, I have a talisman for 80,000 coins. And we're gonna head over to the hub. And we're gonna reforge these armor pieces. So come over here to the blacksmith, change all your stuff that you dropped to wise. It could be anything, like I said. So go like this, that's already wise. And the red lord sword that you got to heroic. And the dark goggles also to wise. Just like that. And the Dreadlord Sword comes with Sharpness 5, so you're going to want to open an enchanting table. Uh, we can use the one here. And then uh, put on Smite instead, because this is way better. So, we're going to test this out real quick, and I'll show you uh, roughly how the cleater will look like. So we'll enter a Floor 1 now. Let's hope that I'm not on cooldown. Nope, we are fine. So let's put on the new set that we just got. Now obviously your clear won't be as smooth as the one I'm having right now because uh, I have Cata 50 which buffs my uh, stats in dungeons, but it should still be doable with this stuff. Also, just to make this uh, nicer, okay, let's select the mage class by the way. So I think you're able to go in and play floor one. So yeah, this is what you should be doing. Sure works fine. So. Let's move on to floor 1. Moving on to floor 1, with your new gear, your goal is to complete the floor with a score of S with a party of 5. You should play this floor until you obtain a Bonzo's Mask and a Bonzo's Staff. You can also swap out your entrance floor gear with better quality floor 1 gear drop from mobs. Once you get the Bonzo's Staff, you can enchant it and reforge it to Heroic. Moving on to floor 2, all you really need to do from this floor is the Scarf Studies for Magical Power. You can come back later when you're stronger for a stronger version of the Talisman. Other than the boss fight here, there isn't too much different from floor 1. You can use the Bonzo Staff from floor 1 if you prefer the Weapon Style over the Dreadlord Sword, but both still work. Remember to swap out your floor 1 gear for the floor 2 Mob Drop gear that has the most intelligence. Alright, let's move on to floor 3. Moving on to floor 3, here you'll pick up zombie soldier armor, reforge just the wise or necrotic if possible. Also keep your eyes out for high quality floor 3 dreadlord sword as an upgrade to your current one or over your bonzo staff. You want to hang on to any zombie knight chest plates you're into for the future. Important side note here, a massive upgrade will come in the form of dungeonized dragon armor. You will get dragon fragments from killing lots of adventures in dungeons, you should have already gathered a nice accumulation of them or killing dragons in the end. Make sure that you can use the armor while dungeonized before you use it. Young Dragon Armor is the best as it gives plenty of walk speed in dungeons. You do not need to buy any major drops from the floor 3 chests, you just need the Catacombs XP to move on to floor 4. Moving on to floor 4, here's where I will show a major class split. Up until now, if you've been following the guide, you'll have playing exclusively Mage. At floor 4, you can either continue playing Mage or swap to the Archer class. Mages are generally more in demand than archers, making it slightly easier for them to find parties. If you choose the mage split, you're going to want to play floor 4 until you get 3 spirit wings. With these, you can use whatever mining setup you have to mine lapis and the dwarven mine minecarts until you can craft a spirit scepter. You can also set up lapis minions if you choose. If you choose the archer split, you'll play the floor until you obtain a spirit bow. Since this is just a dungeons guide I didn't mention before, but you should have already had a mining setup for farming all these coins, because these are quite expensive. 
If you pay, if you pick the mage split and drop a spirit bow, and you have sufficient funds, you could still buy the spirit bow as it's still useful for the museum. If you pick the archer split, you should definitely still get a spirit scepter, not only for the museum, but because it's generally good outside of dungeons for certain things. For floor 5 and up, we'll split it up into two different sections for the two different classes. For floor 5 mage, you'll want to upgrade the dark goggle to shadow goggle, then use dungeonized young dragon armor, or wise dragon, or a mix of the two. It's at this point you should start hot potato booking your armor and maybe your weapons and trying to obtain a sheep pet. You can place chicken and sheep minions to make this easier. If you don't have those, you can use a pet that makes you tankier like a blue whale, or alternatively, for speed and intelligence, use a black cat if you've been participating in a lot of spooky festivals. If you have coins, try getting a legendary turtle from the dark auction for the built-in anti-knockback, which really helps your ability to clear. You'll want to purchase Shadow Assassin and either a Livid Dagger or Shadow Fury for outside of dungeons combat reasons and also museum reasons. For a floor 5 archer, you'll ideally play solo archer to help you clear with your spirit bow. You're probably in a mix of floor 3 and 4 mob drop gear, and if possible, dungeon has unstable, strong, or superior dragon armor. Do make sure you can use it before you put it on though. You want to put down chicken minions to obtain a legendary wither skeleton pet for the next few floors. It is imperative that you purchase shadow assassin armor as soon as possible. You'll be playing this floor until you finish your entire shadow assassin set. This might take a while, so be prepared. You'll want to reforge the fierce and hop potato bucket. After 100 runs, you'll obtain a golden livid head. You will use that over a shadow assassin helmet only inside of floor 5 of the dungeons. Also, purchase a shadow fury and livid dagger for outside of dungeons and museum reasons. Try to purchase 4 overload 1 books and save them in a chest for later. You can also overload 1 or 2 your spirit bow if you have the coins. You'll want to try to unlock the itchy power stone from wolf slayer which boosts your attack speed significantly which heavily buffs your dps as a short bow archer. Moving on to floor 6, for both the classes you should have Devon's armor, at least a gemstone gauntlet, and be making 15 million coins an hour or more mining. This is important as the chest price of items on this floor is even more expensive than the last one. Both classes will purchase a giant sword, precursor eye, necromancer lord sword, and summoning ring if you see them in the chest for progression and museum reasons. These are not cheap. If your mining setup provides you ample coin income, feel free to recombobulate your main weapon and your armor set. After that, you can recombobulate mining gear that'll actually give you more mining stats when you recombobulate it, and then accessories. For both classes, you'll run floor 6 until you're at least catacombs level 28. For mage, your clear will be quite similar to floor 5, but by now, you should hopefully have a sheep pet and have leveled to level 100 by going for alchemy 50, which you should have done by now also. You can try to get an implosion belt, which will greatly buff your spirit scepter damage and will help. And to get this, uh, you can use a Corrupt Soil minion item. It is very easy to do so, and uh, you don't have to collect your minions more than once a day or twice a day. You will buy any Necromancer Lord armor you see and reforge Necrotic, except Loving on the chest plate, and Hot Potato Bucket, and use it over what you're previously using, except the helmet. You'll keep using the goggles. If you drop a Giant Sword, kit that out to the best of your abilities and try using Left Click Mage on mini bosses and continue to use your Spirit Scepter on the clear mobs. If you play enough of the floor to reach Catacombs 28, purchase Wither Goggles from Ophelia. These are another major upgrade in ability damage. For Floor 6 Archer, you'll also need to make a major upgrade. You'll explore Enderman Slayer and get a Juju Shortbow. You can try to do Tier 2 Slayers until you have the materials. For Obsidian, you can mine it in the end with Devon's armor with whatever or whatever tool you have. And the same can be said about Quartz in the Crimson Isle. You will dungeonize your Juju Shortbow and apply 5 stars, hot and fuming potato books, and if you drop Power 6 from experiments, now is the time to use it. And also, those 4 Overload 1 books from Floor 5 that I told you to save, you'll be turning those into an Overload 3 and putting it on your Juju Shortbow. Reforge it to Precise using an Optical Lens Reforge Stone, and if you don't have that, you can use Headstrong from the Treasure Hoarders in the Dwarven Mines. Once you start playing Floor 6 with your Juju and Full Shadow Assassin, you will clearly notice how huge the upgrade is over the Spirit Bow. You will drop Livid Fragments in the boss room. Use these to upgrade your Shadow Assassin armor. This will also upgrade the rarity of your Shadow Assassin by one tier. Here's where the fun starts. For Floor 7, make sure you have at least 35 million coins on you, or the ability to get said 35 million coins within 2 days. For both the classes, I recommend to any of you that have the mental fortitude to obtain at least a level 100 golden dragon pet and a few hundred million coins in the bank, though the other pets should work just fine. This should be doable as you should have a 655 drill and max devons when you start entering Floor 7. This isn't a matter of difficulty, but time. Important note, just because you can enter at Kata 24 does not mean you should enter Floor 7 at Kata 24. Stick to the guide if you want the optimal results. It's also important to have a Bonzo staff on you at all times in the boss fight. And if there has been a Jerry Mare since you have started your profile, then a Jerry Sheen gun. Keep a Bonzo's mask on you also to quick swap in case you're near death. If you have an axe to the shredded, bring that with you as well as it helps for pulling aggros of the wither in the boss fight. You do not need this though. 
This should not need to be stated, but purchase at least one auto recombobulator and buy all the Necron Tandals and scrolls you see, even if they are duplicates. You will keep playing this floor until you obtain a fully scrolled Hyperion and a diamond Necron head. This will be at least a thousand runs, if not more, so be mentally prepared. For Floor 7 Mage, you'll be using your Wither Goggles and Necromancer Lord Armor with your Spirit Scepter. You'll be playing a lot of this floor, so investing in a Midas Staff for mini bosses and healthier mobs might be a good idea. This is only possible if your point in time lines up with the Scorpius Mayor. Important disclaimer, never, and I mean never, use a Midas Staff in the boss fight. The Archer is the main DPS of your party and the Midas Staff ability blocks arrows, so you're essentially just hurting your team. You will drop a Wither Armor while playing Floor 7. Once you have Wither Armor, you can either request your party let you kill the Bloodroom mobs or do solo frag runs until you have some laser eyes. You will use these laser eyes to craft your Wither Armor into Storm's Armor. Make sure to do this to all the pieces of the armor except the helmet. Make sure to kit out your armor with anything you have, including any growth sticks and prot sticks you may have dropped from the experimentation table. You also want to build a Necron set and a Golder set once you've established yourself in Storm's armor. For Floor 7 Archer, use a Shadow Assassin and Juju Shortbow. The Wither Skeleton pet shines in this floor, but the Golden Dragon is better because of the massive attack speed and damage. You'll have a hard time finding parties in full Shadow Assassin, as there are almost always Archers in Necron's armor available. Because of this, you will struggle through in low cata parties, or play Burrs, or have friends help you out with some runs until you get at least Wither Helmet, Leggings, and Boots. Important disclaimer, do not pay your friends for helping you with coins from another profile or IRL money, as this is considered boosting and disallowed. You can still get help from your friends, but only if they're helping you for free. You will need to use the Diamantes handles you get from doing frag runs either by yourself or with your friends to then turn your Wither Armor into Necron's Armor. Once you obtain this, use all you have on it. Recombobulators, Seeming Potato Books, Growth 6, Prot 6. If you have the time, unlock the Gemstone slots and add Jasper Gemstones. Put less stuff on the helmet as you will be swapping it out for a Golden Necron Head after 100 runs. Open any Precursor Gears you see and reforge your armor to Ancient. Open all Soul Eater books that cost 1 million coins and try to get a minimum of Soul Eater at level 3 on your Juju. After level 3, you don't really need to add more Soul Eater, but if you notice a lack of damage in the clear, you can add more. You can also save up up to a Soul Eater 5 book for your Terminator in the future, just so you don't have to come back and get it once you've already gotten your Terminator. Once your Catacombs level is higher, you can, you can sacrifice a little bit of damage for speed, open a pair of Wither Boots and make Max Source Boots. It is important you have both Necron's boots and Maxor's boots. Try to make them as similar as possible. You will also want to build a Storm set and a Gold Earth set once you've established yourself in Necron's armor. You will continue playing this floor until you obtain a fully scrolled Necron's blade. After this, you can swap to the Mage build for more ease and clear to help you get a Diamond Necron head if you don't already have one by the time you've got your Hyperion. For part 2 of the video, moving on to Master Mode, the Mage split ends here. Mage will need to transition into the Archer build for Master Mode. To move on to Master Mode, you absolutely need a Terminator and a good set of Necron's armor, amongst other things I'll discuss in the next video. To get the Terminator, you'll be utilizing the Fully Scrolled Wither Blade that you've obtained to kill Tier 4 Enderman bosses. I have a guide video on how to do this on my channel. That sums up this video, and I'll see you in Part 2 for Master Mode.